Fractal geometry is the underlying cosmological assumption that I use in my line of reasoning in order to explain not only the distribution of matter seen throughout the universe, but more so its invisible underlying structure of cold dark matter. Having previously described self-similarity and the life cycle of a star from cradle to grave, we now come back to looking at the Boyoti's void in much greater detail. I'll start by stating the facts about what we currently know of the Boyoti's void through observation. At 700 million light years from Earth, the Boyoti's void is located in the vicinity of the Boyoti's constellation from where it gets its name. First discovered by Robert Kirshner in 1981, the Boyoti's void or Great Void is an approximately spherically shaped region of space containing very few galaxies. The diameter of the spherically shaped void is around 330 million light years. According to the cosmological principle that the universe is isotropic and homogeneous, this supervoid of nothingness should contain between 2,000 to 10,000 galaxies. The mere 60 galaxies that have so far been identified inside this supervoid are confined to a tube-shaped region running through the middle of the void. It has a volume of 236,000 megaparsecs cubed. It is a void whose volume is 0.27% the volume of the observable universe. These are the basic facts that we know through empirical observation. From my point of view, in trying to imagine such a massive star-like object outside the confines of our own universe, going nowhere, the discovery of the Boyoti's void is a picture-perfect fit. I have not sufficient words to try and communicate the magnitude of importance of this discovery with respect to the Genesis story I hear tell. Imagine trying to describe the geology and movement of land masses upon the Earth without the theory of plate tectonics, or biology without Darwin's theory of evolution. It can't be done without defining words and giving voice to the evolution of language with respect to the discovery of plate tectonics and DNA respectively. But before the words can be defined, there was the genesis of the idea. When I first pictured my idea, a number of years ago now, all I had was two jets travelling away from some gravitational singularity. I spent a long time trying to imagine the input into the Big Bang singularity as being like that of an active galaxy. Here, the supermassive black hole at the galactic core is feeding upon the material at the core. In turn, the output from this feeding process was a pair of continuous jets being expelled from the poles of the singularity. But an active galaxy whose supermassive black hole is feeding from the material inside the galaxy can happen for a very long time. It is not a near instant process or event. For example, looking at the Hercules A active galaxy, we see long continuous jets spanning several million light years in length. Travelling close to the speed of light, the formation and evolution of these jets is a continuous process that has been ongoing for several million years at the very least. We call the Big Bang event just that, the Big Bang. It all happened in an instant, as an explosion. So the idea that our universe was born from the same dynamics as an active galaxy did not really fit the current evidence. The cosmic microwave background radiation is after all the afterglow of the Big Bang explosion. But a hypernova, now that fitted my vision that our universe is one of two jets picture perfect. A hypernova is the second largest explosion in the universe, the Big Bang explosion being the largest ever. So I started imagining an undefined mass of star-like object whose mass is at least two times as great as the weight of our own universe. Of course, it is certainly easier to imagine that than the primordial atom of the classic telling of the Big Bang theory. And then sometime earlier this year, I accidentally learned about the Boyoti's Void, and in it I saw the invisible imprint of such a star. Not for the first time was my jaw on the floor as yet again to my eyes. I watched a major piece of the jigsaw fall perfectly into place. Simple, so simple, and all it took was the right chain of thought from the one initial idea. Here, in the Boyoti's Void, is the imprint upon our verse of such a massive, undefined star-like object here you can see the foreshadow of a pair of verses that are yet to be born. There, 
beyond the confined walls of our own universe is such an undefined star-like object. Standing in the path of the jet, that is our verse, it flowed around it, encompassing its volume, like a stone in a riverbed. The volume occupied by the undefined star-like object displayed the equivalent volume inside our verse, giving rise to the formation of the Boyertes void. The magnitude of this idea is that it shows the egg from which the chicken hatched. Or let me rephrase that. Can anyone give proof of the existence of the primordial atom? The primordial atom being the infinitely small in volume, but infinitely massive in weight and perfectly smooth particle from which the universe exploded into being. How it went from being perfectly smooth to having some irregularities via quantum fluctuation is called inflation theory. Superstring theory postulates that the primordial atom came about because of the collision between higher dimensional membranes. But in order to test the ideas of superstring theory, we need to build a particle accelerator that is about the size of our own galaxy. And when your view of the world is particle orientated, when you haven't exactly defined what an actual particle truly is, then such explanations are problematic, to be polite about it. How did fundamental particles of nature come into existence, is the question. But if you view the problem coming from the point of view that particles came first, and is therefore the building block of everything, such a question is nonsensical. More so, quantum field theory tells us that particles are in actuality excitations of a given quantum field, like the electromagnetic field. So, where did that field come from? For me, it is the unfolding of the jet into a series of concentric rings, the surface of which is that for a particular quantum field. One key idea behind the assumptions laid out by the homogeneous and isotropic cosmological principle is that we are unable to truly know anything about what happened before the Big Bang. In other words, it assumes we are unable to answer the question as to exactly how and why our universe of matter came into being. From my point of view of fractal geometry, the shape and structure of the Boerity supervoid physically destroys this assumption. Not theoretically, but physically, as it has been observed and measured. Here is a shadow imprint of such a so-called primordial atom. Moreover, we see a mostly homogeneous and isotropic looking universe because of the constant rotation of the jet that is our universe. Following the same physics of mixing milk with tea, you can see the distribution of the milk mixed with the tea rapidly approaching a homogeneous and isotropic state. So too is it with our own universe. Rotation is in everything, and this is because the jet that is our verse is defined around an axis of rotation that is the Higgs field. The Big Bang Theory, told by the Lambda CDM model, says everything, both time and space, came from this primordial atom. In the very instance that this primordial atom came into being, it developed into near equal amounts of matter and antimatter. I say near equal, for there is a supposed imbalance between the amounts of matter and antimatter, where for every billion particles of antimatter, there are a billion and one particles of matter. Only a billionth of the volume of matter survived this annihilation process, and it was this that blew up into the universe we see today. This is the tale of the Lambda CDM Big Bang model. The shape of the universe is flat, as measured from the microwave background radiation. A consequence of a flat universe, as told by the Lambda CDM model, is that the universe is said to be infinite, meaning it has no edge, so it goes on forever. Thus, the bubble that is our observable universe, all that we can know and measure, is an infinitely small part of an infinitely much larger whole. And all this was born into existence 13.6 billion years ago. That is to say, an infinite expanse of space-time exists, which has paradoxically only existed for a finite amount of time. Add into this that what actually exists is only one billionth of the original whole, that was the infinitely small primordial atom. Is this not the most absurd series of paradoxes? An infinite universe that has only existed for a finite amount of time. More like the products of minds in love with the functional and analytical arguments laid out by the likes of Cantor, Hilbert and Banach. According to my reformulation of the Big Bang Theory, 
The reason why our universe came into existence was because of an undefined star-like object outside our universe going nova. Following the same pattern and dynamics as a massive star going supernova, our universe is one of two jets. The other jet is our twin universe of antimatter. In looking at the logical basis of fractal geometry, we have seen how a pattern seen at a smaller scale can be representative of the whole. Putting these two ideas together, it is logical and reasonable to conclude what an undefined star-like object outside the confines of our universe is an explanation for why our universe came into being. The Boiety Supervoid is the shadow of such a star-like object whose size fits the bill. The fact that the 60 galaxies inside the void are confined to a tube-shaped region running through the middle of the void, echoing an axis of rotation of the star-like object only adds to the certainty of my convictions. This was one of the many facts I've learned in making this film. The process of discovery continues.